like I don't present myself serious, I would say I'm probably more serious than like 99% of the artists. That's the original American dream almost. The plane was on the runway. It turns around like, we have an ambulance waiting for you. I was like, what the? F <laughs> yeah, you have to play this stupid game. Well, I'm here. just saying, you know, on the sake of it, so da dumb it down so Danny could understand. <laughs> I can't understand. <laughs> <laughs> I like the honesty. And the labels, that's their whole model is they can't start a fire. It's up to the artists to do everything really themselves. How, how much was it? Like, it was, I can't say numbers. Yeah. You said 50. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you find that people underestimate you. Can you sing us a song? <clears throat> What an honor, man. What an honor to be here. You mean that? <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping you maybe would dress up a little more. Maybe the pajamas set the Dude, bar this low, is but... pretty dress up for Danny, man. Right, this, yeah, you, yeah. I came and he's naked playing basketball. <laughs> <laughs> this is definitely a, a step in the right direction. I well, tried to ask you to bring a suit, and I clearly that was like a stupid thing to ask. The thing about the suits is tough because... You can't just throw them in the washer. You got to like dry clean them and stuff. Okay. So then it's like. It's really that hard for you? You have like a whole team of people. <laughs> I don't here know where the dry cleaners There's are. Like people cleaning your whole this house. This guy all won't day. dry clean my suits. You're so your new song flopped. Everything I do flops. <laughs> no, here's how I look at it everything is just one failure after another. And I don't use the word success unless it's like monumental change your life success. So what's next for you? Um. So right now, I am about to put on my album. I don't okay. know when this airs. When is this going to air? Like two years, three years? Well, the only reason you're... We're, <laughs> the album came out yeah. in 2023. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When's the album uh, come September out? September 29th. Uh, so in two Fridays from now. But I'm sure so this if, episode will probably be out in like, probably what? Yeah, so if you're watching months. the album drop two months ago. <laughs> <laughs> if, this video, if this episode ever even airs. I don't, we don't know if it will. We've done four. I, doubt it none will. Of the, I don't think it's going to get aired. It's going to get shelved. We'll yeah. just expect it gets shelved. But yeah, basically the album comes out the next day. You don't have to tell us when because it's not going to get posted. Yeah, okay. I got you. I'll stop talking. Should I just leave now or... <laughs> have I right. wasted September what? Of our time? 29th? September 29th. <laughs> this album, Alone in a Crowd, uh, my third studio album, drops. And then the next day I fly to Bali, Indonesia, uh, play a show there. Then I go straight to New Zealand, do a couple of shows there, a bunch of shows in Australia. Then I go straight to Europe, like across Europe and the UK, and then so it's like a tour almost. It's like a, kind of like a tour. It's kind of like how one many of your shows world you tours. How many you shows call you yours do? the world tours, right? Dude, it is I'm a world impressed. tour. Alvarez done his research out of you, man. No, we talked I yesterday. Know, uh, <laughs> I know. Well, I do research. I, yeah. I had someone dig in a little. <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah, no, how many? Together. So you, you heard you, of a PI? You start the tour, and then how many shows do you do? We do like three or four. No, honestly, like, uh, is, there, month, is it all? It's already like a thing, right? What do you mean? We just we just show up and. <laughs> no, how many? <laughs> we show up. Like, like, like when I did mine, it was only like 38. Play. Like yours is what, like 100? I don't know. We don't know yet. Oh, it's going to be, you know, maybe for years to come. Last year I did 100 shows. This this is uh, 36 shows or something. But okay. basically we show up and we ask people, hey, and you play a <laughs> play. Stick no, play. but you, I know you're downplaying it, but dude. But those shows for people who haven't been, I feel like it's such a fusion. Like, I feel like you're a multimedia artist in Thank so you. many ways. Like, I, he has, <laughs> <laughs> this is the worst interview ever. I, we can just have you here. Thank God he's got you. You see, I do every episode, like, I'm trying to transition to some kind of question or something, man. I love it. This guy's got the questions. This but guy, look, you got to get bored. You got to <laughs> admit, I'm smart enough to know to get this guy here. I had to suck this guy's dick to get him here. No. <laughs> Only I'm hanging. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Here's how I think. Here's okay, how I think. okay, okay. Ooh, should I answer this question? Or you want to keep no, me okay. at the what table was your more? <laughs> <laughs> My question, like what, your shows, like I, 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 like I feel like they're just fusion of so many things. I heard, like I was even researching that you're getting these crazy cues in your ear. Yeah, like yeah. move right, move left, move. Left. Like, those are called slates. So in my <clears> ear, I have hundreds of things being read to me. Turn to the right, turn to the left. So like it's like one, two, three, down. Turn to the left. One, and it's just like very, very many cues. Everything's planned out meticulously, just like when I do a music video. But basically, what I've done with my live shows, I've invested, I think it's a ballpark estimate would be about $5 million into just the visuals alone. Whoa. But like multiple <laughs> semi-trucks. We have like, you know, a team of 15 people. We have... Multiple buses, and um, the current version is a mixture of a movie, a TV show. Why are you laughing? I can't even say it. <laughs> Bro, this is not, this podcast thing is not going to work out for you. <laughs> Should I stop? Should I stop oh. talking about my dream I've been working on for five years, invested my every penny oh. into? <laughs> Yeah, tell this me, is too boring. Hey. You want to know what is this? What, what you want Dave to just wants to get naked right no, now. Man, man. I know it's going through his head. Tell, me, like, yeah. tell me about the dream. Wait, I want to know about the dream. He's, he's just sitting there. He's all. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, he's like, is it too early to get naked? 
<laughs> hey, monkey with symbols. <laughs> oh, I think I broke your mic. I it, try to fix it, but oh shit, he broke the mic. Hello, dude. We don't have a budget like you. We don't have semi trucks. Come on, or I want to know about the tour. I was just talking. You yeah, said yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell me, tell me, tell me. I feel like I'm in, I feel so like I'm in school. Uh, yeah, yeah. Write this down. Are you writing this down? <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. It's a mixture of a movie, a TV show, a play. You're doing it again, <laughs> dude. Man. You gotta cut some of this. <laughs> no, it's great. This is the good stuff. This is gonna make your podcast really good, dude. All right. So, do you want to hear it or should yeah, we just yeah, move yeah, on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Movie, TV show. Yeah, play. Play. Concert, stand up comedy, motivational speaking, WWE wrestling, and professional scooter sense. So, it's like fusion of entertainment, but then the music side of it, we have everything from dance music, pop music, rock music, rap music, uh, classical music. Country music. You're picking up hairs off the fucking. Try not to laugh. I'm listening yeah. though. Yeah, it's just fusion. Everything for me. Like I'm really as an artist. There's not a lot of new things you can do. Every chord progression has been played. Every single lyric rhyming pattern. It's like there's only so much that can be done. So for me, the excitement happens in fusion and taking things that don't fit with another thing. For me, I'm all about juxtaposition. So you merge things that really shouldn't go together and find creative ways to blend them. So like that's where I get excited as an artist. Where I'm like, oh, there's room for innovation and doing something fresh because everything's already so played out you'll never reinvent the wheel so like for me i'm like oh this is a cool way where i can take super serious music and have the most ridiculous stupid imagery tied to it but all of it's you know my heart and soul is put into it but it's like sheer ridiculousness like the music there's not a joke but the whole image is purely just a joke you know it's like mm. you yeah like the haircut <laughs> yeah, 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 we yeah. both have great yeah, hair yeah. dude <laughs> What? Um, wow! Thank you, Alba. Wow! Wow, hey, dude! Sorry, wow, sorry. wow! You have like good hair, but too good. Like it's normal. Yeah. He's got the same haircut I had yeah, when yeah. I was like ten years old. Thank you. And look at my hair. I can't say <laughs> shit. I, I would say like, is it fair to say like you're almost like a mix of Wes Anderson meets like Weird Al meets like Tarantino? Like who? Like take me through if like you're looking at all your inspirations. Like what are the biggest ones that stick out in terms of who influenced your art? For the music side of it, I was really inspired by the gorillas because they were doing fusion in genres that didn't belong together. Yeah. <clears throat> so like they would have like Damon Albarn, the singer, singing on a song and then Del the Funky Homo Sapien would rap on it. And that was two totally different worlds and they found a way to merge them together. And I grew up as a kid in middle school, elementary school, listening to that. And I was like, oh, this could be one person. So like I was like the next generation that came after that. Mm -hmm. And so like I learned, oh, I could just be both these people. And I could also be producing the song, making music. So for me, it was just like, that's what happens. We, as something's made and different things get brought together, then the next gen's like, oh, I could probably figure out how to do both those things. But it's a mixture. Obviously, filmmaking, Wes Anderson's a big influence. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's more like Weird Al is funny because like his music's parody. For me, I'm almost like a parody of what a real artist should be, but not like a parody artist. So I'm like mm. a parody of a serious artist. Mm -hmm. Because like, for me, even though I'm not, like I don't present myself serious, I would say I'm probably more serious than like 99% of the artists because I write every lyric, I write every melody, I produce the music, I bleed out for this shit. I don't have a personal life. I write every music video, I direct every music video, I produce it, not to go on this list of stuff, but it's like, no, I don't yeah. have a life, all I do is art. And I like, don't give a shit, like I don't try to be like, oh, I'm so fucking cool. Or I could be way more successful if I got a normal haircut, <laughs> if I sold sex and tried to look good. But instead I'm like, that shit is so fucking played out. I'll let everybody else do that. I want to do something different because it's just boring. What was that moment? <clears throat> I was watching your early vines. Mm -hmm. What was that moment where you're like, oh shit, I need to do something more than just music right. to get people's attention? Well, I tried the music thing. I didn't work. It still didn't really work. You know, I feel like it's one. No, come on. It had, you're like you're a humble a guy. No, yeah. but I'm like, you know, if you're in America, the music competition is so hardcore. Mm -hmm. I feel like it never, I feel like you've never feel like you've made it though. Right. You probably feel the I same. I don't feel like I made it. Yeah. I mean, there's a thing with success where we're always comparing ourselves to everyone else and you're never going to be at the top. And no matter what, <laughs> even if you are at the top, you're just stressed about keeping it out there and it's short lived. So it's like this whole mindset of America. It's like keeping up with the Joneses. It's yeah. like, oh yeah, my neighbor's got this TV. I got to get this yeah. TV. So much in America is centered around us comparing ourselves. I remember my mom would always say that shit, that, really? that quote. What'd she say? The keeping up with the Joneses shit. Right. She would talk about other people though that she knew that would like be trying to keep up with the right. Joneses and like kind of talk shit and how that stuff was stupid. So I, luckily I like kind of grew up with that. That's the original American dream almost was like, okay, you get a white picket fence and yeah. then you like are able to buy stuff. And then the idea was your neighbors would get this cool thing. And you're like, oh, they got the new refrigerator. We got to yeah. get the new refrigerator. The boat. But now it's shifted. I think the American dream is now like, oh man, how do I become an influencer? Like a YouTuber, like you, we talked yesterday yeah. and you were like, oh man, like YouTubers is like the lamest thing, right? It's you kinda, pretty lame. Yeah. That's what you think. But the kids, think that's why, what kids why do you watch. Think that? Why do you think that? Because, and I don't, I don't, I'm not like specifying people in YouTube, but it's like, 
Well, you said a lot of names. Majority, yes. imagine, <laughs> yeah, you call majority me a lot, but... of people on YouTube are just so lame, dude. Not, no, not everyone. There's like a bunch of great creators, of course. But I guess it's like that with everything. You know, you have cops that suck at their job and are good at their job and firefighters that suck at their job and are good. But it's like, there's just, I feel like with YouTube, you just have like, and same with like TikTok. Well, I think you know we need mean? some examples. Yeah, let's yeah, say like, some names. Like, like, yeah, yeah, you look into the camera. Yeah. Dude, right yeah, there's, there. dude, there's a bunch. There's a lot of them. But yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. It's hard. Like, I can't like, even watch it, dude. Like, yeah, like who? I don't even know. I don't, I mean. The, well, I think the thing with YouTube is a lot of Just turn YouTube on and start It's kind of catered shit. to kids in a lot of ways. I guess, you know, kids yeah. don't watch TV. Yeah. They're not listening to the radio. They're consuming on YouTube. They're consuming on TikTok. That seems about it. Most of my shit that I watch is like, I would say like on a flight, like maybe like YouTube shorts or like Instagram reels and then TikTok, I don't really go on much, but like Instagram, Instagram reels, there's so many good videos I watch. And it's just like random people. They're not even like famous, right. but maybe they're trying to get famous, but there's like crazy videos on there that I'm, it's like insane. The shit people are doing yeah. nowadays. Like even like, like what, like who, dude, I seen this one guy jump off a fucking, how, how, how 47 feet or something like just a, just like a giant building, like into dirt. I'm like, I didn't even know that was possible. Like I thought his legs would snap in half. I've seen some some of this. It stuff. says like, yeah, it's like 13 meters or 14 meters, whatever it is. I don't know. It's something something crazy, but it's like, and then and then he they're like, the, and then these people in like Russia. Remember that the guy Alex that like sits on the car and they're driving and then he like jumps. Oh, those dudes are. Have you seen that crazy. guy? Dude, Dude, one of them almost died recently. They rode. They tried to jump from one. <laughs> A uh, rooftop to another, yeah, and then the, the car slipped off the right the ramp. Oh, I seen that video. Yeah, he, almost the, died dude, he that. like hits the wall, dude. He sent me that, and I was like, "Damn, that's sick." And then <laughs> I was like, "We should do that." And he's like, like laughing emoji, like thinks I'm kidding. I yeah. didn't know there was someone in the car. I thought they just like kind of like got it to launch. Right, right, right. And there was like a guy, and I was like, "What the fuck?" Yeah, that shit's crazy. That's but, like, but there's a lot of people making good stuff. I think like that, you know. Mm -hmm. But the problem with those videos is like YouTube would never, you they won't push that. They're just right. gonna delete your video, so you it's think like, so? yeah, you have to like play this stupid game of like, oh, yeah. you can't go too hard, you can't go too. You I know, do it easy. every day. Yeah, like for me, when yeah. I write a video, it's like the last video I put out it came out M today. Music though, music videos are a little, are a little, they're more lenient though because they considered are there. Art. Have you ever got age restricted? Yeah, all, all the time. Yeah, it's it's really fucked up. Yeah, yeah. I got ones that had like sixty million views, age restricted, and that would be at like two hundred million. I saw that. I went to go watch your most yeah. recent, like your most yeah. popular video. I had to opt in. I and I had another one that recently went, but like I have to think about when I'm writing stuff. I have to like constantly be changing it, and sometimes I even have to film like a second version. I'm like in case something oh, wow. happens. Yeah. Because yeah. But, like sometimes I'm just like, all right, when is the line drawn? But I have to think about it because I am <laughs> also like conscious of okay, there is kids watching this. And it's not necessarily just made for kids. It's made for everyone. I try yeah. to make art that can connect or whatever. You could call it content videos, whatever. For me, I consider No, no, no. Art. Don't, don't, don't yeah. play it down. Well, it's I'm just right. saying, yeah, you know, yeah. on the sake of it, so dumb it down so Danny could understand. <laughs> I, I can't understand. <laughs> <laughs> like a with, video, you know? Like uh, with the cell phone. Moving pictures. Wait, the song or the video? Oh, the video. <laughs> and the song. But I'm saying I have to constantly censor myself and think about like, okay, I had this one video where it's like, I got this pogo stick. I learned how to do pogo stick stunts. I was in Serbia filming for three months and I'm doing- Serbia, brother. <laughs> Shout out Serbia. What's up with, you don't like Serbia? No, no, it's just a video. That, what's that guy's name? Jokic? I played in Serbia, brother. I played Serbia one time and then I like had this little, I, none of my costumes, clothing, gear made it. It got stuck. And so we had to like just rent, we just bought a bunch of like track suits and shit. And we like, I like, I was like, oh, I want to get some stuff to like throw into the crowd. I like brought this big like rubber- uh, like horse and then I was like came out at the encore to do it to play the last song and I like threw it in the crowd and I'm like singing and they threw the thing back at me the mic hit against my thing and chipped my tooth oh wow it was really it was really did you bad. get it fixed? yeah <laughs> <laughs> obviously yeah, yeah. Fixed. but anyways that was before I ended up living there for three months this year I filmed these videos okay I was just to answer what I was saying <laughs> I think it's crazy because I'm like, okay, I want to have the pogo stick like turn into a machine gun and like, but then I was like, that's so like enforcing school shooter stereotypes. And I was like, you have to be so careful what you do put out, you know? I know you don't care. Yeah, because kids, kids might take kids their pogo copy, stick. Yeah, they like, might bring their pogo stick machine gun to school. <laughs> <laughs> it's that serious though, dude. This, it was crazy. And when I was in Serbia, they had two mass shootings and they had never had anything like that. And like, it's an American thing, you know? It's super gnarly. We don't need to get into all of it, but it's like, I'm like, fuck, I gotta be so conscious of how I do it. So I was like, if I put a tiny little torpedo that has a little explosion that's this big, I'm like, that seems probably fine. It's did, a fucking did, pogo Did you stick. learn that lesson like the, the hard way by doing something that you paid? Like this sounds like ideas that you were having and then you basically changed it. You have it to constantly of, be like, you know. <clears throat> but is there, Oliver, is there a story of something that you like you paid and you produced and then you didn't put it up because of changes? I'll still put or it up. But like, for example, the one you're talking about, one of my bigger videos, yeah. it's like, 
I had a thing where there's an army tank riding down the street and like they blew my head off and it was like rolling and there's like blood. And for me, I was like, this is so cartoony. Birds fly out of my neck. Like I was like, this is like surrealist art. It's not like, it'd be very hard to imagine this being serious. I have a big suit on and it's like so like comedic. Yeah. All right, well, uh, should we wrap this up? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think, think we got what we needed. Uh, oh yeah, what are you here to promote? What was it? Well, I was trying here? to promote the tour, but you clearly yeah, 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 not, yeah. I wasn't the allowed tour, to do that. Yeah. So, thirty six shows, thirty six shows, only in the U S. None in the U S. <laughs> world, it's a real world tour. So, as I understand, yeah, so what did, does that mean? Real means, world tour. Yeah, it's like actually in other countries, like, unlike like which your ones? world tour. Like which ones? Indonesia. No, I went worldwide. I was remember I hit Canada. <laughs> yeah, but the other one you didn't even hit Canada. <laughs> that was a joke though. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. People were so mad. They're like, "This isn't a fucking world tour." Like talking <laughs> shit in the comments. I was like, "Jesus, it's a joke." Yeah. Well, I'm gonna go to like probably like for example, last tour I did in November in Europe, I did six countries a week. So I don't know yeah. how many countries, but there's pretty much mostly different countries. Obviously, Australia. There's only like, 50 countries, all right. <laughs> oh wait, I was gonna ask you how many countries have you been to? I don't know. Three, maybe? Four? So you're not into traveling? You don't, you're like, or it scares you, you said? It scares me. You're scared. Yeah, I'm scared <laughs> of traveling. <laughs> no, I just hate flying. Why? Shit's fucking boring. Boring? You just, just take like, some like <laughs> melatonin. Yeah, but I, I, I'll try your method of the whole drug The thing, trick is traveling. It. You don't get jet lag. All you have to do is just go in. You have your phone. You have your times of where you're going to go. You just get on the clock immediately. You get on the plane. doesn't matter what time it is. If you need to stay up, you stay up. If you need to go to bed at 3 p.m., just take a bunch of melatonin, yeah. whatever, and just pass out. You said some other stuff, too. What, what were the other things? I don't know. Whatever you can get your hands on. <laughs> <laughs> just like, but it helps so much because I'll typically fly in and then have to play the show that day. I'll have to fly in and go into a tech scout and look at locations and figure out, like, for a music video shoot, so I don't even have the luxury to be like, yeah, oh, wow. I'm going to adjust. It's like, forget adjusting. How, how, how does it, uh, performing when you're sick, what is it like? Does it ruin it a bit? <laughs> Dude, it's crazy. So my last tour that I was in Europe, I was spitting up blood. And then it's yeah. crazy because you're going to hospitals and no one speaks your language. I'm trying to use, like, a translator <laughs> my phone dies <laughs> and I'm like trying to figure it out and I can't reach anybody and it's like it doesn't make it easy but um a lot of IVs you know you're sick yeah. in the hotel bed and then you like hire someone to come in and put like a nurse to come in and give you IV and it's like one of those things where you're just like constantly de depleted and if you cancel shows people are like you're the worst person I mean whatever you do you're the worst person no yeah. matter what but like if you cancel a show people are so mad it's like we're never supporting you again and it's like I feel like I can't no matter how sick I was, I've done show. I did a whole tour in a wheelchair one time, dude. Really? I lost one third of the blood in my body. I flew in the airplane and, uh, or they're taking off on the runway and I start projectile vomiting blood. <laughs> it turns, it's black when it comes out of you usually because it's like travels through your body and your organs and it was fully this, this, bl this brown and black. Did the plane stuff. turn around or no? The plane was on the runway. It turns around, they're like, we have an ambulance waiting for you. And I was like, mm, I can't, I gotta get the next. They're like, you can either <laughs> get in the ambulance or cancel your flight or, you can get on the next flight. I was like, what the fuck kind of rule is this? <laughs> <laughs> and bro, I was literally throwing up all over the thing. It was all on the side of the, and I also had like, I had destroyed my foot. I had to, I couldn't even walk. And it was just this nightmare thing. And I was like, I'll, I'll get the next flight. <laughs> there was, and then I get the flight. I fly in at like two in the morning and I'm just like, something was seriously wrong. And then I found out that, um, this episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Enjoy fantasy sports? Visit Prize Picks, a unique daily fantasy app where you pick individual players based on set projections. Rather than choosing teams, you decide if a player will exceed or fall short of their projection. If you're knowledgeable about sports, give the Prize Picks app a try. It's accessible in 70% of the United States, including California, Florida, and Texas, and Arizona. First time users can benefit from 100% deposit bonus by using the code DANNY. Enter the code DEPOSIT100 and they'll match it with an additional 100 by using the code DANNY. I had lost one third of the blood in my body and I couldn't, I didn't know at first. I had to start doing tests later, but I, what happens when you lose that much blood is the, your lungs, the amount of blood you have is like, you can't take deep breaths. So I was like, am I getting asthma? Is this, my grandpa died from emphysema. I was like, is this the onset of emphysema? Like I can't breathe. And I was also, I played the show uh, with my friend at Red Rocks. It was like an opening slot. 
<laughs> no, I, I was the special guest. And I was in the wheelchair and I was like, I can't breathe. And my friend's like, maybe it's the altitude. You're all like up way beyond sea level. But I was like, this is weird. I can't breathe. I'm like playing in a freaking wheelchair. I still can't breathe. Mm. Something seems off. And then I'm just freaking out. And then like they did some tests and they're like, yeah, you've, you've lost one third of the blood in your body. And I'm like at this place and I'm in a freaking wheelchair. I set the microphone attached to the wheelchair so I could like do wheelies and spin <laughs> around. But you can't like, I'm like, I would let so many people down. There's so much money. Like you asked me, oh, do you like plan the tour out or you kind of just go there? Like we plan this out a year in advance and it's shifted. It's been over like probably 18 months for just this last tour and we canceled it multiple times and I'm paying 50 grand for semi trucks that we're not even going to use. And it's like this huge ordeal, you know? It's like crazy. So it's like the pressure that people put on. And I remember I canceled, I did, I threw Firefest. I was going to have Smash Mouth open for me at Firefest. It was in San Diego. It was my Firefest. And that name's cursed, dude. I ended up like getting this, I had to get surgery on my throat. I had to cancel the festival and people were so fucking pissed. Like he was a liar. I was like, dude, Firefest is just cursed. <laughs> and bro, straight up, after it, it got canceled, the dude, Billy hit me up, dude. He wanted to throw it together. Wow. He's doing it again. He's now. doing it again. I've heard yeah. that. Yeah, I've heard it was that. crazy though. The real fire. They sent us a box for like tickets and stuff. Really? Yeah. If you want to come, I have a plus one. I'd love to. Yeah, dude. I I'm bummed. I was in. supposed to throw the real first fire fest, <laughs> but yeah, it didn't work, dude. Hmm. But um, that yeah, it's first. I think the fire fest. Did Smash Mouth show up or no? Dude, I had to cancel the whole thing. Oh yeah, and that was what I was gonna say. So my throat was. I couldn't. I had some problems in it. I had. I was going to these different doctors and. This year, I couldn't talk for five weeks. I had to use like a robot voice. And then I, I got surgery on my throat. I couldn't talk for five weeks, couldn't sing for three months. And it was just crazy. I just like locked myself in a room and I wrote a, mo a movie, a feature film, a uh, screenplay. And then I just like made a bunch of, produced a bunch of music and just like disappeared off the face of the earth. I tried to grow a beard, dude. I can't grow one. Hmm. <laughs> it was rough. This is about as much as I had the goatee. It was so bad, dude. It was really patchy. But when is the what? Like, tell us about the feature film. Like, when I've written that? four. That was the fourth one that I've written. So my idea with like art is I take it very serious. I want it to be sacred. So I don't like think I'm gonna write a movie. No, I write movies. It's like you got to write a bunch. You got to master the craft. I didn't like release music till I made hundreds of songs. So it's like you don't just like write one movie and be like, dude. I fucking write movies. What's the plot? plot. What's the plot? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Jamie, I want you to, you have $150 million. I want you to invest it into this movie. I got a bunch of plots, a bunch of crazy Come ideas. Come on, tell us one. But you can't. Someone's just going to steal it. Make 30 it nights, 30 it. swipes. That's a good plot, dude. Did Is you that, hear that? Your, was that your movie? Dude, everyone, that shit went viral because of your ass. Man. Yeah. Someone's going to steal that shit. What happened? Well, I did that interview with Dan, the one you're talking about, $150 million bad boy. Oh my God, of course. It's how. How'd you come up with that title? <laughs> it's a fucking boy. good what title, the man. Fuck, dude. <laughs> this, this guy's watching too much Mr. YouTube's Beast. YouTube's bad boy. Analytics and Are shit. you a bad boy? Not really, man. I'm that's, honestly. That's a, that's I'm a like, really good guy. You're a really good guy. <laughs> Are you? I'm, I'm questioning. Really good guy. I'm questioning uh, it. Most it underrated, depends. misunderstood. But, but, anyways, he said that in the movie. Like, I have a movie, 30 nights, 30 swipes about. Like, how basically, you're homeless 30 days. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, you and get, you made you a YouTube video point. and then you monetized. No, off never. <laughs> we need to monetize. I want to learn how to monetize. It seems like you're doing just fine. You don't know how either, though, right? I'm learning. It's yeah. been a very slow road. It's I did sleep on a couch for a month this year. <laughs> and I was by choice. It wasn't like I had to. I sleep on my couch all the time. Yeah, yeah. And you're. <laughs> $10 million mansion. <laughs> what is it, 600 acres? I can sleep wherever, honestly. Yeah, in your helicopter where you got the <laughs> I don't have a helicopter. Tank, he drives around. <laughs> You're like, oh, I could sleep in the army tank. I could. You nah, ever drive an army I tank? I don't like when it's hot, though. What's the craziest vehicles you ever drove? I saw, did you own that thing that's the puffed up wheels? Yeah, you should use that for music. Bro, video. I love that shit's those. Funny. I want to. Yeah, you could wrap that, too. Who do you buy that from? I don't, my friend got it, but it's like, it, it's cool, but it's not like... It's it just kind of, it's like kind of, it kind of, people ride in the back and they're like fucking hitting their head and shit. <laughs> like, it's not like, uh, well, it's not designed to like pick up chicks, dude. You're like riding it. It's like, dude, a, one time we ride had over one, the water, right? Yeah. Can you, you they can, can do it? whatever. One time we had like, dude, I don't know, 10 people in and I fucking flipped the thing, dude. And this girl hit her head and she had this huge knot on her fucking, it was bad. But like, even if it's just like, you were smiling while you said this. You I mean, it was funny, but she was fine. She was fine. No, dude, I hit my head too. That shit. Oh, we went, we, you ever wear like a helmet or anything? Uh, dude, that thing's pretty sketch. Like it's it's cool, but like yeah, if you're in the back, you're kind of fucked. Okay, I'll take a note. Yeah. I'm not. But you, you can that. you can ride shotgun with me. Okay, there we go. Has a seat. Hold on to my pocket. Okay, but that thing's dope. I'm, I'm mad respect that you got a sherp. You should come out to Inglewood, man. That's yeah. You should go to Inglewood. Is that your spot? That's Is that just, where you live too? That's the spot. No, 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 I live here. But when I interviewed Danny, I flew out there and just. It's a great it's place. Wild. Better than this. I'm dying better than this shithole. We should set it up. Yeah, we should. I want to be in the pool. Let's in go one tomorrow. Of those, like, 
The oh, yeah. I showed him the, the video, Alex. I want him to I hit, hit me while I'm in the pool. We should do in that. one of those. Uh, Above ground pools, what they call it. Yeah. What's up with your uh, your scooter? You broke a Guinness World Record with the. That's correct. So you how do, how you tall did, was it? I did a lot of research last night. I looked at my Instagram. I saw the first thing. I haven't looked at your Instagram yet. but I'm joking. Um, it's not even on there. I took it off. Where's it at? Uh, we could probably get it. You have to have a semi truck come to deliver it. Basically, I have it like in Long Beach, and I Where, can get who, a semi truck. Storing this, how I tall have, is it? One of my storages. I have like six. How tall is it? Fourteen point seven inches, I believe. Fourteen point seven. Fourteen feet. We have to Google it. Seven Fourteen inches? feet and seven inches. Yeah. Who what was the record before that? I think it was like fourteen feet and five inches. Oh, nice. And then you paid five hundred thousand dollars to get this thing made. It was worth every penny. Yeah. Or no, you, you said one hundred fifty. How much? No, was it? it was five hundred. It was actually five hundred thousand. Yeah. Fuck, it's, dude. But dude, you don't break a record. No one's gonna shirt. hit their head on it. Yeah. But the the thing is, it's nuclear grade titanium, so this shit will last longer than we will if there's like literally a full on nuclear explosion. Yeah, we can just ride the scooter in the sunset. <laughs> <laughs> well, like the cockroaches. I think two things that survive: the cockroaches and I hate cockroaches. and my scooter. So technically, three things. I hate cockroaches and scooters. How many? Why people, do you hate scooters? I'm, What's I'm your? Oh, you're such a bad boy. <laughs> I'm joking. The fuck. <laughs> I hate scooters. <laughs> How many people can we fit on the scooter? Um, probably like twenty, dude. Really? We yeah. should go to a uh, Home Depot, Alex. And we should pick ride up that all fucker the... down a hill and just crash it. Yeah, let's go to Baxter Street. You seen that? That's like the steepest hill in California. Where is it? Uh. Echo Park. The steepest in California. You ever seen that test? Numbers. You ever seen the Tesla video where the guy oh, jumps that yeah, shit? That's yeah. that's Baxter. Well, I thought that was you for the longest time. <laughs> no, I wish we should. I should have done that shit, dude, dude. They got so much air. <laughs> but is that how it is for you? There's just like no laws apply to you. Just do whatever. And if someone else gets hurt, it's not your problem. I don't. I try not to get hurt or get anyone else hurt. Right. What would be worse? If I got hurt. <laughs> <laughs> I like the honesty. That would suck. I mean, it would suck either way. I really don't want to get anyone hurt. That would be horrible. Yeah. But I'm I down to come. It's Inglewood? Inglewood, Florida. Because there's place. Inglewood in LA, too. It's a little different than that. I it's think with an E. It's the same. I see. Spelled different. If I come, what would we do? Anything we want. You have an ice cream shop there? I or do. it's a frozen yogurt spot? No, ice cream. Wow, you do a lot of it. I heard, I was trying to get into ice cream, and they said it's not a good business model. They say that for everybody. Because it melts. It does melt. You need freezers. <laughs> 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 Who said it was a bad... Uh, Big time, the big wigs, dude. Who? Who? We're all the same management company now. The big wigs up at the management company, they're like, don't do ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> Who was it though? Some I just keep big when, you see, when he says big wigs, I picture like this, like him walking into like a store and it says like big wigs and everyone in there is just wearing giant wigs. Like, no, nah, don't do it, man. <laughs> Some like that. You know, the no, people, who said though? Who the people said? who, you know, the big guys upstairs. Yeah, yeah. Who was it? The, I think they work for Walmart or something. I don't know. You did your Walmart deal with them? Who said it was a bad idea? I don't know names, dude. <laughs> what did they look like? He looked like you had the same haircut. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> dude, it's great. You know what I think? We both kind of have helmets built into our heads. I know. I try not to hit my head. Oh, well, you have a little extra padding. I hope. That's the thing. If you hit hard, bro, your forehead is just That's, easy access. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to do the bowl cut. Well, this is the bullet, the bowl cut mullet. And what's this one called? I don't know. I just go They call it the I, Justin Bieber, huh? Is that what they say? That's what I used to have it. They used to call it I don't it that. say that. I actually just met this guy in like 2014 and he's been cutting my hair ever since. Really? He, yeah. Someone cuts that? <laughs> yeah, he trims it. <laughs> <laughs> so you show him, like, what do you want? You show him a picture of no, you? No, I don't even show him anything. <laughs> or you show him just Justin. show him a picture of me. <laughs> here, do this. <laughs> so what's the next haircut? Do you think there'll be a point where you're like 60 and this I don't know. I think I'll just shave boot? it all off, I think. And then you'll be like, is this so much of your identities wrapped up into the hairstyle? I mean, look at the logo. I know it's everywhere. It's a, it's a logo, it's a nice I mean, and you logo. go into a house. There's huge portraits. What do you? You had there was what? shrines, candle lit. The whole thing's a shrine. <laughs> yeah, you have like I don't a know. mannequin of yourself. What what will you? What will be your next haircut? Oh, I can't say that. Say it right now. I can't say it. Yeah. Well, I wanted to do Come the on, bowl. our podcast needs to be different. You know? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Give us I'll something. give this exclusive. Give an exclusive. exclusive. I want to do the bowl cut. So get rid of the mullet, the bullet, the back end because this is three sixty party all the time. Party. Yeah, yeah, but. I want to do the bowl cut again, but then cut the top part out. Oh. I can do, you know, I can like do the top the part. religious style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You think you could do I it? I can do it. I'm That's kind of your thing, right? You, you guys mean, do fuck, it on the same dude, day. It's not even straight right there. I could have done that. Bro, I don't own a comb. I, can, I used I, your comb upstairs. I have one. You can use I it. Used you it. can keep it. I didn't use it for this, but I used it for the top part and it didn't work. Hmm. Just sell off your hair when you cut it. It's worth a lot. I collect all of it, actually. Yeah, I do too. I have some. Like of my own hair. In case anything happens, they can clone yeah, me. Yeah, you can patch it back up. 
So what's the dynamic here? You guys did one interview and then he's like, I need some help. Like, I can't. <laughs> no, no, I did one interview alone and I was like, John, I really need some help with this. Do you find that people like underestimate you because of the way you've gone about and your style is being so different and unorthodox? Basically, I'm put into this crazy contract where five albums, which is, you know, the first album took me four years to put that in perspective. Wow. The other ones I've been moving fast. So it was like so. a 20 year contract. Probably like 10. 10. That's pretty that's 10 to pretty 15. Wild. And you, you, but you think eventually it won't be like that where people aren't. Well, I think they're already these. shifting it. And I waited on the publishing side. When you sell music, it breaks into 50 50. Half is the masters, half is the writing, which is the publishing. So I held out on the publishing. I was like, I'm not going to be doing this because I want to have something that I own still. And then at a certain point, after three years, you need someone to go and start doing like admin work where they're collecting. So now my admin deal that I did with my publishing side of things, and obviously I built it up crazy, but like I got the new wave of deals on the publishing side. So that's like, oh, we only take 10%, you get 90%. And then basically we'll give you like a crazy amount of money as an upfront advance. But like, it's a great loan compared to on the record side. They make a dollar, I make 14 cents of it. Instead of we make a dollar and I make 90 cents on the writing, the others, it's the exact opposite where it's like approximately like, 12 to 14 percent depending on the splits on the song that's how much i'll make on a dollar so i gotta kind of like you could just break it down to 10 points it's like you know it breaks into 100 points which is one penny is a point so you're the most underpaid person in the i made work field i made tens of millions of dollars and this year they started taking better care of me so i'm grateful but you know it still is what it is and i did the math and after the first you know Five years, it averaged out like eighty thousand a year of like after taxes would be That's like how get? much I made, yeah. which is crazy. It's fucking. It's not wild. bad. Yeah, I mean it's not bad, but when you make like twenty million dollars and you make eighty grand out of that a year, I know how that feels. Crazy. Do you? I mean, I do. Yeah. Wait, can you break that? So twenty million. How, how did it like just all the? Well, they basically are just like you never recouped. That's the whole model. Is like you have to really like dig in and see. But the idea is they give you money up front. Mm -hmm. But if they give me a hundred grand, I basically have to pay them back a million because it's 10 cents. Every time I make a dollar, I'm not making the dollar. I'm only making the 10 cents on it. So it's like the model is just set up for you to, whatever money they give you, it's just the worst loan you could really ever have. So that's starting to shift now that like, you know, they're trying to, I mean, people can kind of do it without them. They become archaic. Mm -hmm. And I still need them because I make music videos and my videos cost millions of dollars. Yeah. And so I need the support of the label to be able to make this kind of stuff. Technically, there is a point where I could get investors or hopefully make enough money that I wouldn't need people to be, I could self-fund. But the idea is that like, for someone like me who makes heavy music video content and like filmmaking, that shit is so expensive. Like I show you the video that came out yesterday and you're like, I could make this for 20, but like, I don't know if you have the awareness that there's like 30 people there and you have trucks and all this stuff. And so no, much I was saying I could. Yeah, you could, but like I wasn't saying like this sucks. I can make it. <laughs> I can make it. You yeah, yeah. you asked me how much I thought it would cost. Yeah, yeah, to yeah. Make. but you're like, oh, I could get I this free. Sh I wasn't I could shitting get these on it. To come, but I was like, you know, how, how much was it? Like it rough. was. I can't say numbers. Yeah, you said fifty. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it wasn't. It was the cheapest video I ever made. <laughs> One minute. Because I, I produced it myself, so. Yeah. We don't need you. You're good. You don't yeah, need to come back. This is the guy with the questions <laughs> too. So this is the this is where the interviews start. <laughs> We're starting it over. You stay back. <laughs> no need to come back, buddy. You're all good. Wait, okay, dude, I'm actually curious. How has TikTok changed the way you put on music? You know, the, well, I, I feel like the way you write a hook, the way you right. think about the visuals, like how has that impacted how you come For me, I don't let it particularly sway the way I'm going to creatively make something. I just make it, and if I love it, then it makes the album. But that being said, you are conscious of, okay, where TikTok songs really move, it's like there's a pretty abrupt change happening in the song. So you're like, usually it's like a, the end of a verse into a chorus. People, I'm gonna, I'm good. I'm walking, about to walk. Don't walk. No, no, please, man, don't leave. Please don't leave. But anyways, it hasn't shifted as much, but it's more the way it's packaged. The more it's like, the thing with TikTok is you can't make a song go on TikTok. If you try to push it too much, it's very forced and it's not gonna really connect. But what I've found is that if it organically is starting to go, you have the control to be able to really fuel the fire and take something. If something is starting and tracking and trending, you have the potential to take something that could have just fizzled out to be like a monumental, like $10 million song. What, what, what's an example of that? An example is just like, like the song starting on. to move. A lot of, yeah, Life Goes On and Miss You both had, the, they're both in this kind of ballpark of like, Oh, it's starting to get some traction in the Philippines. Oh, Brazil's adapting it. We're seeing some trends. There's, oh, there's a couple hundred videos. 
And like once it starts getting to the thousands of like using the sound, you're like, oh, something's happening here. And if you jump on it, you can basically like put, you know, you can't start the fire, but you can put gasoline on it. And the labels, that's their whole model is they can't start a fire. It's up to the artists to do everything really themselves, even market it now. They're kind of become more and more obsolete. So they're like, like I'm doing this album and they're like, so what are you going to do to promote it? I'm like, well... These are the things go I want to do. Shitty and like, podcast. I'm like, I'm gonna go on Danny Duncan's <laughs> podcast that doesn't exist yet. He's gonna wear pajamas and pee the whole time, and that's about it. It's gonna do great. I mean, I talk shit on you guys. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, fuck those guys, man. No, it's it is what it is. You know, I signed up for it, but it's hard when you get put into a situation where someone's like, you know, they put the pressure on. They're like, well, if you don't do this deal, you know. You'll probably never get a job in music. You know, that's the, oh, they wow. might not even necessarily say that, but that's the whole the thing. Feeling. The pressure is so on. And I was like, you know, 23 at the time, 24. And I'm like, damn, clock's ticking. From the pop world, you're already an old man. Put me in one of your songs though, for real. I'll think about it. Is there uh, been songs that you put out that now you're like, man, that shit sucks? All of them. Oh, really? <laughs> All of it sounds like dog shit. But no, what, honestly. What, that's how I think. What's, what's like the biggest one that you dislike? All of them. Here's huh. the thing, bro. They're awful. I'm not here to sell you on my music. Yeah, yeah. I'm not. I'm not the here. The old to be music's sold. dog shit, but the new shit. What's the new shit? Alone in the crowd, out September 29th. It's probably already <laughs> out. I saw you did a song with KSI. Yeah, the YouTuber. Yeah, he's my boy. That song's really good, huh? Stop, dude. <laughs> Is it? I don't know. You tell me. I haven't listened to it yet. I just seen it. You played it last night. Well, I, I kept clicking it, and you, then you would be like, second. turn it off. So I, I don't listen to my own music that's out. I only listen to the new shit. Uh, because it's so corny, bro. There's nothing more it? corny than being like, yeah, listen to this. You don't have to do that, but you Here's can like, just thing. like it. <laughs> I love playing it. It's so epic. When I when the, the chorus drops out of a song, and I just have 10,000 people singing the lyrics. There's such a powerful thing. 10,000 is a stretch, though, right? No, I play for 30,000, 50,000 at festival. <laughs> Four or five people. Imagine. Bro, I played last year at a um, a crypto event. There was like 50 people there. I wish I was there. Dude, and TMZ. Can you play up? TMZ was there. There was footage where a person came on stage and I beat them up. Really? I put them in a headlock and they they were trying to put their hat. They came on stage and were trying to put their hat on my head. And I choked them out, put them down, started punching them. It was like all on TMZ. And then people were commenting, they're like, Oliver Tree just beat up his only fan, his one fan. <laughs> <laughs> only fan. I love it. But yeah, anyways, it was one of those things where, yeah, sometimes I'll play a more like kind of private thing than the money is like crazy or something like that. But like yeah. in general, yeah, like I played Red Rocks this year. It's like 8,000, something in that ballpark. Yeah, Red Rocks is legendary. Is there an event that you've said no to? That was. Mm, we take everything. We can <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I say no. I told the, the the agents this year. I'm like, yo, this is the new number. If it's not this number, don't even bring it. I take it as disrespect. And so I have my standards. And this summer, I only played five shows, but those shows were like double what I got paid last year. So I can play instead of doing ten shows. I did five, and it's a lot less work for me. I get to do a lot less traveling, and I can go and spend, you know three weeks traveling across Europe just for fun. So it's like, you know, I'm making, yeah. as I do those moves, I'm getting smarter about it. But sometimes like, for example, it's a new market. When you go to a new place, I'm going to go to Bali, Indonesia. I never played there. I've been there. It's like the greatest place in the world, but you got to start over again. It's probably a thousand cap room. Usually you start back. Like I went and me- did Mexico last year. What is so funny? <laughs> this guy, dude. dude, can you stop, man? I'm trying to listen. This might be the worst <laughs> podcast. <laughs> That's what we should have called it, the worst podcast. This is the worst podcast I've ever been on. (laughs) There's no doubt Uh, about that. That's hilarious. But, you know, you're cool. You're all right. (laughs) (laughs) Enough for me to hang. What are you here to promote again? Promoting the album. (laughs) It's probably out now, right? We can safely say. If if you're watching right now, it it probably was out two months ago. (laughs) September 29th. So you're dropping these once every eight weeks. What's your favorite song on that album? (laughs) Oh, man. So many bangers. What's your favorite? You got to pick one. So it's like choosing your children. Yeah. And yeah. really parents think back, oh, I don't have a favorite, but they do. Whatever kid is the most successful. Yep. And, and treats you the best, which means they take care of you. I like treat you my mom really well. Take she, care of I, your I, mom. I know my mom likes me more than my sister. There you go. Oh, obviously. Shout out Gwen. Uh, but that's the thing. It's like, I love them all. I'm really proud of this one that I, I made. It's not like, it's probably the least pop. It'll be the least popular song. It's not out yet or it's out now. Because it's, it's, it's been out for two <laughs> it's months. It's been out for two months. <laughs> yeah. But it's called Ugly Side. And that song, I love the way that my singing goes into rapping. Like this album, I started rapping again. I always like rapped. But last album, I did like my country album. And so there was no room for rap on it. 
Uh, but it was a big flop. So I was like, I got to get out of this whole country scene. Yeah. I was like six years. I was two years or something too early. Now country's like the biggest thing in the world. And I just missed the mark. Why don't you just relaunch? You know how they do that sometimes with businesses? They'll yeah. do like a reopening. Yeah. I started making acoustic versions of it. I was like, I already made this. this we should much. relaunch that last album. Yeah. Do a podcast run. Let's just promote that album right now. Cowboy Tears out yeah. now everywhere. <laughs> that one too. Biggest yeah. flop of my career. Is it actually? Oh, yeah. What, what, what is considered a flop? I mean, the label just being like, what the fuck's going Pretty much on? Everything I do is a flop, you know, because you're on a label with like Cardi B and Ed Sheeran and whatever, some of the biggest artists. Ed Sheeran's pretty good, huh? It's pretty hard to compete. Of course I'm a flop. I'm like the bottom of the barrel. So when I turned 21, I had I had been drinking like crazy amounts of is this funny? <laughs> this is I was used to drink this Chinese tea, Puer. You ever heard of it? It's like super crazy caffeinated. It's like super amazing tea. But do you know about this? Yeah, yeah. That's and it gives you prostate stones. No, but it's like heavy amounts of um, caffeine, certain things. But at the time, I can't remember what it was. But taking a bunch of ibuprofen and different things, and basically, it like you can get prostate stones. But the thing with prostate stones is you can't get them removed. They just live there. And if you were do surgery to remove them, you could like experience getting. So you have them ED. right now. Yeah, you have them for the rest of your life. Let but us they, see. You want to see them? Yeah, let us see them. Uh, you can't <laughs> see them, dude. But anyways, they had to put a. They were looking to see what was wrong with me, and they put a camera up my dick for that. And then the other time when I lost one third of the blood of my body, then they put it up your ass. Is that yeah, the I think so. I've never and then they do the mouth at the same time, and you have to drink this shit. And You're porn, you just, dude. <laughs> the fuck you is? fucking just diarrhea for like ten days, dude. Oh, oh, maybe ten hours. It's so gnarly. You know about this? No, I've never had that. Yeah, I'm like, you know, I've gone through, I'm like a vet, an old man. Huh. When, do, when So you still have the stones? Or what's up with that? <laughs> Your brother has them. <laughs> Whole family. No way. I mean, it's- Passed it's, down for it's generations. Thing, that's like part of the reason why it's like, well, for, for one, I'm sober. I don't, I don't want to do drugs, but like drinking is really hard on it. When I was turned 21, I couldn't even, um, couldn't drink on my birthday because it was so bad. I had to have like a little donut I sat on. <laughs> <laughs> It's like a little blow up donut thing. And I was like so broke, dude. I was like my after my failed record, my first re record contract that was failed. And I was like driving rich people around. Like you remember when rich people like their problems, bro? I'm like driving them like, you know what I hate? You know what sucks so much? I was like listening to them and they're like, when you get a caper from a hotel and it's so big that they don't give you the right knife to cut it with. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck are these people talking about? And they're like driving like, we could buy that one. Should we buy that one? <laughs> I was like, this is crazy, dude. Driving Richie around is the worst. You're like looking at the donut in your pocket. <laughs> He wasn't a fucking donut that you eat, bro. It was like a blow up pillow. I like, no. I'm like this poor guy. I, know, dude. Dude. I bring in this little donut and uh, like put it down in the chair. What, what, what's your favorite uh, flavor donut? Bro, I can't eat donuts anymore. <laughs> so don't ask. No, actually, maple. This is his question. This is his question. Orange, orange, orange. This is so crazy that dude. you're going to have a podcast. I'm so happy for you. Uh, I'm happy for you. I feel bad for you, but I'm no, I saw. You're going to learn how to have conversations. The best part of this is before we went up, I was like, oh, so, because I tried to get Danny to wear a suit so we could wear, I have my big suit in the car. I brought all these outfits. You didn't, all these, why didn't you want to no, do No, we're going to do it. It needs to be daylight, dude. Listen it's fucking to me, nighttime. Listen to me. I'm like, Danny, what happened to the suit? He's like, oh, man, I don't want to buy it on the washing machine. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? I think I, I have a suit. I, I got to look. And then he put, yeah, he puts on this. And it's like, I'm like, wow, nice. He's like, don't worry, I make up for it in the interviews. I, yeah, I'm like, I did not <laughs> say like, that. You said this, you're like, I was you're joking. Like, I'm in the interviews, I'm on. And I was like, okay. I said, and then it like, just jump cut. No, 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 no. <laughs> I said, I said, I make up for it in the interview. I go, hey, Oliver. What? I said it like that, like clearly. What is that noise? I don't know, but I just spit all over the you. fuck? Dude, it's this right. is the level we're working with. I've done so much interviews. I'm talking about, because I did the radio ones, they just spit you in and out and yeah, you yeah. do like a hundred in a week. Mm -hmm. Tell Bro, us more. I've never had a worse question than the donut. Well, we're honored you're here. <laughs> but I know, I think it's good though. I think it's cool because like I get to be here to help teach you. Yeah, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm here like, to learn, you know. Yeah, I, didn't, I didn't really get to go to college. Did you, where did you, where did the education stop for Danny Duncan? We're still learning. Well, it never stops. But where did you stop? Did you go to high school, elementary school? I went to, well, we're still learning, yeah. Of course, but I'm asking. <laughs> <laughs> what exactly? It doesn't stop. It never stops. I know, but I, know I agree. <laughs> <laughs> now he's PR Trey, dodging the question. <laughs> we need to get you like a PR Did you go to college? Sure. I went to college, yeah. Which one? So uh, I went to SF State. 
San Francisco. You're not in. Was that a state yet. college? State college. I went to public. In the name. <laughs> <laughs> You've got the big questions. I like it. I know. Uh, went there for two years. Then I got this record deal, and they're like, "Oh yeah, like don't worry about it. We're gonna pay for you to live." Like, and then I made all this music, and I made album after album. They're like, nah, this one ain't it. And then I made another one, like two years to make it. Like, nah, we don't think this is it either. <laughs> and I was like, "This is it. This is what it sounds like." And they're like, mm, "It's like a broken car. You can't fix it." And I was like, "What about a mechanic? What is this analogy?" It was like the worst analogy, but they didn't, you know, they didn't realize what they had. They understood, they invested a lot of money in their terms of what it was. And I have so much great gratitude that they actually like invested money from an early age when I was 18, took me to record in London, do all this crazy stuff. But it was like, they didn't have the means to really like keep up paying for an artist that's expensive as me. I'm a very expensive artist, not because I get a lot of money, because I invest a lot of money yeah. into the art. So they were not used to spending that kind of money. And they were basically at a certain point, they're like, yeah. I'm like, this isn't really working for me. Like I'm making album after album and you guys are not really like, you don't like any of the music. And then they're like, mm, it's not really working for us too much. Like we think it's good that maybe you go and work at a cafe. Now, have you talked to any of them since? I try to reach out and be like, yo, come to the show or something. Oh, but it's wow. like a hard loss for them. Yeah, yeah. It's like that's the yeah, big yeah. golden goose that got away, Damn. you know? The biggest. The biggest. I mean, you're one of the biggest people in the music industry. I physically, I'm very tall. You, he gave me a free shirt yesterday. It was like European. It was like I could see my whole. I was like, come Bro. on, man, you gotta tighten up. We don't do that. You gotta, you gotta <laughs> get that shit. Hit the gym, man. I've been. I threw my back out, but yeah. I've actually. I lost. Check this out. No Ozempic. No fucking bullshit. I lost 20 pounds in the last like. I guess three five years. weeks, He's like three six years. weeks <laughs> from working out super hardcore. I was getting so fat, dude. I was eating six Michelin star restaurants a week. Just, you, I asked you, I told you this yesterday. You don't even know what a Michelin star was. I had to explain. That's you know what I'm, the here to, I'm here to learn. This? You don't know what a learn. Michelin star restaurant is? Dude, I eat fucking Takaya and Chick-fil-A every day. Do you know the story behind, do you know the story behind you Michelin? I told them. It's cool, huh? Yeah, it's The crazy. tire company trying yeah. to get people to go to the restaurant. Well, tell them, dude. I'll retell. I'll tell the story. Yeah, you tell the story. So... Michelin tires yeah. is, you know, they're trying to sell more tires. What can we do? Creative ideas. Well, one of, I think it's brothers, the Michelin brothers, right? I don't know, maybe. One of the brothers, the Michelin bros, he was like, yo, we should make a food rating system so that people will drive to food so that they wear their tires out more. So the Michelin stars is one star is if you're in town, you should go to it. And that means that it's an incredible top tier restaurant. Two stars, if you're nearby, you take a detour, go eat there because it's that good that you should drive out of your way just to get there. And three stars is you need to book a trip mm -hmm. yeah. to go to this restaurant. It's that good. And most of the time you don't even order the food. There might be options of like the top, the different tiers, but it's essentially like, this is what we make. It's like the omakase style for like sushi, but it's just like, you know. I wonder so, how we could get on that for cream pies. <laughs> Because that'd be if we could even just get a one star, you know. <laughs> but it's a, yeah, I think it's one of the most genius marketing yeah. campaigns ever. It is, and it's like the Michelin star is so elegant and so like such a high echelon, and then like the tire is like we don't think about it in that and, same yeah. capacity at all. It's like a big guy <laughs> who like is a big. You, yeah, have you ever seen the guy on the Michelin star plaques? Yeah, they have they have his face on some of them. Yeah. I think there's different ones. I don't know if the stars have that, but there's other ones that are Michelin approved that have that. They have, yeah. It might not be the star. Yeah. But yeah. I was at one and they were like bringing the star out. It's like a huge deal. Everyone's like freaking out. We it's need pretty to go wild. That's how many I was going to. I was like there for them being like aficionado. <laughs> I did. I went to one by myself recently and I was like, before I like started getting really healthy, the last one I went to, I was like by myself and it was like all these couples and everyone's like, it's their biggest day of the year and they're going to this restaurant. I'm just there like on a Tuesday night by myself, <laughs> like in the middle of nowhere, just like before a show. I got there before everyone else because I flew in from Estonia, like canceled my vacation to play this show at a stadium opening for the Imagine Dragons. And it was like the most random thing ever. But anyways, I'm at this thing. I'm like, all right, I'm going to go to like a nice restaurant. And I'm like there and I'm sitting and I'm like, they're bringing you like crab, soft shell crabs that are actually just full crabs that you just eat. It's like crazy decadent, the most like insane thing. And I'm like, by myself, I'm like, this is so weird. I feel like a food critic, you know? Everyone's like having this big monumental moment. And then I'm just like lonely guy sitting. And that's why I made the album Alone in a Crowd Out Now Everywhere. Do you sell physical copies? I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> We've got like seven versions of the or vinyl. Do, or does the label get all that? They get all that. Damn, so it's not even worth plugging. No, it's worth plugging. Is it? If it does well, then I can come back next year on your shitty podcast again. Okay, okay. So we Then actually, let's plug that because I want yeah. you on this podcast. 
You ever fly Spirit? Well, I've flown it all, dude. I, I told like Spirit, you, I'm like the master of Southwest Airlines. Yeah, dude. they're pretty. So that's, like the that's the first that airline I've ever Always flown. Like put me in the. Sometimes I'm not, but you know. Well, uh, so Oliver, where can people check out your stuff? So the album, what what single? Like if you like people are new to your music, they should check right. this out first. Which one? It's hard because this album just has pick so much, a single. Dude. I know, I know. What's it's your favorite the, one? Well, there's so many different genres. You like rap? You like pop music? You I like, like rap. Alternative which music? one should I listen to? Hmm. Good one for you. <laughs> Play it. Play it on the fucking phone. No, I showed you one yesterday. You didn't like it. It was a whatever. That was the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. No, I'm done. <laughs> I, I can't do this, Danny. He told me to say it sucked. Who? You. <laughs> You're like, hey, say it sucks. <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> I did. I had him do like 20 takes. He had me do one where <laughs> I said it sucks. Act, dude. He's like, it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> It's hard to lie, dude. I like I liked it too stop, much. Stop, stop. You're, you're even worse liar now, dude. Everyone can see this shit. He had me fake cry, too. He had me fake cry. That was my idea. That was a good idea. But, yeah, the album has all these different genres, all these different styles. So there's dance music. If you like dance music, there's some bangers. There's a lot of different styles. So it's, it's to each their own. But I would say this album has been like a crazy breakthrough for me as a songwriter because I played 80% of the instruments on it. And so like my piano playing, my guitar playing, my wow. bass playing, my production just like leveled up really heavy duty. And then I think it's just, it shows quite a range after I got my surgery on my voice. So I couldn't talk for five weeks, couldn't sing for three months. I started making music again. I went to Brazil and like just lived there for three months. And I was just in this, I rented this glass mansion in the jungle and uh, I would go to the beach every day and just like, was I, I was supposed to be there for like three weeks and then I just kept extending it and extending mm. it and nobody could find me because I'm like off the grid. Mm. Lawyer, agent, managers, people are like, where is he? When's he coming back? <laughs> <laughs> I need to do I'm that. I'm just like laying low. Yeah, yeah. It's like, dude, if you ever get the chance, Brazil like is that. like the greatest place in the world. Brazil, top tier. Chef's kiss. Rio what's, de Janeiro. What's number go. two? Yeah. Number two. It shifts every year for me. I ha I've fallen in love, but Japan is up there. Mm -hmm. We really want to go to Tokyo. You got to go. Um, India is up there. Bali, Indonesia. I I found that it sucks now. I can't go there, but Russia was actually one of my favorite places. That's where I drove an army tank. Oh, really? They can let, they let you do anything there. It's pretty crazy. I need to go there. You know, I don't want to live anywhere. I think the thing is, you would never want to move anywhere because you got the best tax breaks in the world being from Florida. Florida. Florida's the best you place. You hit the jackpot. Are you I, from I, Florida? I genuinely love Florida. Chicago. Chicago. Yeah. Chi-Town's amazing. I love Chicago, yeah. I don't really... Chicago's... You probably went one time boring. and went to the fucking Bean, dude. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> you probably never even been to Chicago, dude. Do we, we I don't like it. I don't like Chicago. <laughs> you probably didn't do shit there, I dude. guess not. That shit was boring. What did you do? I don't even remember what we All did. right. We, no, we did go to Wrigley Field. Remember that? Wrigley Field, dude. Listen to this <laughs> That's shit. Chicago, isn't it? That's... That's a fucking baseball field. They're all the same, dude. I played yeah, no, shows. Oh, Wrigley is special. No, they're yeah. all special. Yeah. Whatever, from man. There. Yeah, it was yeah. whatever. What, what's the craziest visual or something that, you know, somebody's thinking about the tour would look forward to or somebody you can't go with, like, have FOMO about? Oh, uh, I think for me, it's hard to say. It's a pretty interesting style of show. So there's just a lot happening. There's It's like sensory overload. But I think one thing that's really cool about it is that I've spent like millions of dollars on these music videos. And then I pieced them together and I've made all these other pieces that tie it all together. So you see it for a movie. So it's like, that's why it's like a movie. But there's also like all these commercials for these fake brands that I also made. So it's like a, a statement on commercialism. Oh, wow. But it's like... Chappelle show skits and stuff mixed in with this concert and there's crazy wardrobe changes. I'm like switching through different wigs and different outfits and it's like, basically the show is me watching TV. I'm watching myself. I'm on stage. There's like an audience watching me on stage while I watch myself on stage or in the movie cool. while myself in the movie watches myself again in the deeper movie. So like there's just layers Oh, like of almost meta. like that... Um Bo Burnham. Do you remember that when he remixed, he react to his reaction, his react? Mm -mm, oh. I haven't seen it, but it's like, it's it's in that world of but meta. Meta, yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, there's things like that, but there's just like, the overall thing, like there's just the actual, the visual side of it is like, you're watching like, just seeing $5 million in front of your face is a crazy thing. Just that dense, you know, it's yeah. like big scale. So it's beautiful. Then there's just, yeah, there's a lot of moving parts and my openers too. Like I've got Supercomputer, which is, an artist that was just featured on my album. They were the second artist I signed to my record label, Alien Boy Records. So they're like the craziest futuristic. They have like these giant computer helmets and like they basically are the future of electronic music. Mm -hmm. And then in between my sets, I also have little Ricky. I'm bringing him. He's the first artist I signed. He's like this nine foot tall alien. So it's like an intergalactic circus. 
There's like just straight up, I'll fight my band members, beat people up. Like it's pretty crazy. When, when as are you far coming as, to LA? When's this? When's we don't tour? know. We might not. Really? I'm more of an international act at this point. Yeah, I saw this quote from you. Like, you're, everything is art. Like, even you go on a podcast, right. like, you like went on Logan's, you did the whole slime bit, which was what gag are you most proud of or you feel like has gone under the radar you think more people mm. should pay attention to? Oh, well, I would say the slime one was the least under the radar. And I'll literally go to middle of nowhere, some place I've never been, and the little kids, they don't even barely speak English. They're like, slime. No. It's <laughs> fucking crazy, dude. <laughs> it's fucking crazy. Do you know, the, like, or give context to the audience if they don't know? Okay, like, so yeah, I yeah. went on Logan Paul's podcast, um, <laughs> Impulsive. And he has a drink called Prime. And so I was like, oh, they're like, you want some? And I was like, oh, yeah, no, I'm good. Can someone throw me my drink? And then I, they throw me my bottle of slime. And it's like, we're, we actually made it for real. It's a legit drink company. You did? Yeah. And oh, literally wow. it's uh, 3,500 calories per <laughs> bottle. That's good. And so I, like, I'm, but I had them drink it. Like they were just like, I got them good, basically. They were just like, you know, they were shook up by it. He had a good reaction. And it was this thing that just went mega viral, you know, yeah, like yeah. between good. all the different videos from whatever tiktok youtube shorts like we're talking about like 100 million views way beyond that you know so it's like that becomes crazy because it's like we're just doing this interview and doing a creative piece but that moment becomes bigger than like a song i'll put out like most of my music you know what i mean but like it's crazy to see like i filmed a music video the one that came out today at some little kid's house and they were like where can we get slime? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah, we'll, we'll bring you some. Like, I don't ever. Man, that album though, I heard it. My ears are on fire from it, man. It's September 29th. Bad, it was, it was, I've never heard something so beautiful. You really liked it. Yeah. It changed my life, you know. It gave me a different perspective on, uh, how so? On everything. Just, you know, I just, I really understand things a lot better, more clear. And, uh, I proud of you, that. man. I'm really Thank proud you. of you. Thank you. And also, that's like, you're, you're supposed way. to, you don't bring a shit though. You know, we, both of us, we, we, we spend all night researching. You don't even bring a signed copy of it. Nothing. I should have brought you a donut. Your, what's your favorite flavor of donut? I like the M&M ones, but you, did you not bring us a signed copy of the album? CD, nothing. <laughs> so where's my merch? Don't I get like, you know, swagged out? Where's all the fucking Dude, you Virgin didn't even bring us a shit. fucking, you came here to promote your shitty album and don't even bring us a fucking, <laughs> all right, and don't even bring oh, us a signed copy. Send those over. Send yeah, those, those over. are yours. <laughs> okay, oh. okay, dude, my brand new set. What kind of shit you what do you want? Me? I want to get everything. I want the full setup. Dude, this shit is ass. Put them on. Say that. Put them on and say that. These things are pretty sick. <laughs> put them on and say that. Large Where the XL. fuck are our gifts? Large XL? I want to. It's for both. They're backwards, Ooh, bro. You put them on the wrong feet, dude. I love that you put this as XL. This is the XL Danny Duncan. Okay, to put things in perspective, I wear a size six in women. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> Those are six and women's. Though, if you, Duncan if you look at the just box. tries to make himself feel good. He's like, I didn't make I'm those. This guy one. did. <laughs> this guy did that. I like it, dude. This makes me feel. This is an XL, huh? What's the album called? Alone in a Crowd. You never even asked me. By who? <laughs> um, is there anything else? Other questions? That's everything. Else. No, you've been great. You've been great, man. Oprah, Barbara Streisand, <laughs> or Danny Duncan. Danny Duncan. You got to fuck one, marry one, kill one. Go. <laughs> kill Danny Duncan. Right Come on, now. man. That's cap. Uh, Danny Duncan dead. Okay. Front page Oprah, Barbara Streisand. Smash, Barbara. Mary, Oprah, Oprah, Mary. Come on. Hawaii. Happy, <laughs> what, happily what ever What about after. Hawaii? That's where she's at. <laughs> I love Hawaii, dude. She's she's destroying that place right now. You Bro, I'm see? so far out of the loop. They were saying something about a submarine. I was like, what happened? I'm so what far. What submarine? I don't know. They said something about it. Oh, that was like a month ago. Which yeah, one? I missed it. The submarine that imploded. Can you sing us a song? Sing us a song. Um. <clears throat> Life goes on and on and on. How's that? Dude, sing the song, man. That's the fucking song. Well, sing like a couple lines of it. That's the whole fucking song. It literally Three just words. says that over and over. Let's say it over and over like for like 10 seconds so I have a clip. I'm not giving you shit, dog. Come on, dude. I paid for this shit. You didn't pay me It's the worst mean greet I've ever been to. <laughs> Fuck off, Danny fucking Duncan. Come on, man. This is a fucking trash bar. <laughs> <laughs> I this, sucks, man. this show sucks. Uh, you, don't, you don't deserve a fucking podcast. Okay? No one should ever watch this fucking shit. You should, no one should have given you a podcast. I should have had a podcast years ago. No one would have watched it then. They're not going to watch it now.